This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with psych ward survivors to learn the truth about what occurs behind the walls of a psychiatric ward. By the end of this video, we'll find out how anyone could end up in an institution like this, and how someone can suddenly find themselves involuntarily stripped nude, pinned to the ground, and forcefully injected with drugs. Are psychiatric wards reserved strictly for those on the brink of collapse who desperately need delicate care and rehabilitation? Or could anyone end up trapped in a facility like this begging to escape. Hello, Anita. Hi, how are you doing, Anthony? Lauren. Hi. David. Hello, Anthony. I feel like most people have an image in their head of what psych wards are like. How close to that image in your head was your psych ward experience? I'm not really sure what kind of image I had in my head of what a psych ward was. You know, I think from movies and popular culture, media and stuff, we get this image of psych wards being a place for society's most severe cases of mental illness and you don't maybe necessarily return from. But then I was mm -hmm. also given the narrative that it was a place to, you know, get help and get treatment for your struggles and for your mental health difficulties. I thought there'd be a beautiful grounds and I'd relax for a while. But then when I got in, their door locked. Padded walls, being in a room of isolation, not having a, a doorknob on my end. While it was not a pleasant stay, it definitely was not like the movies. And you wrote a poem that sums up your experience. Yeah, so the first version of the poem I wrote while I was actually in the hospital. Are you down to recite that for us? Yes, absolutely. And the psych ward says, there is no need to worry. This asylum was built to help you. And just like the straps on the stretcher that you rolled in on, we are going to keep you safe and secure. Notice the locked doors and all the cameras perched in the corners like hawks we will be watching. But this is all for you and your well-being. You are sick, anxious, depressed, a danger to yourself. The state told us to hold you for 72 hours, but if you sign this paper, we can pretend your stay here this weekend is voluntary. Friday morning, you will be woken up by strangers in white coats and clipboards. You will be asked again and again and again about why and how you want to kill yourself. Be honest. Remember, you are only here for three days, so take advantage of the five to ten minutes you have with the doctors. But understand, he has a list of patients as long as his pay stub, so you won't be receiving any actual therapy while you're there, but we will recommend it as treatment for after we let you out. Until then, we want you to be comfortable. So sit back, enjoy the plastic furniture and coloring books. We have old radios with no antenna, but the static is still loud enough to drown out the sound of the woman screaming in 2B. That's just Cindy. She just does that sometimes. Well, she didn't always, but she does now. And until we can find the right medication, we are going to keep helping her. Just like we want to keep helping you. If only you let us. It's Monday morning and you haven't even tried the meds yet. You're still lying to us about holding the knife to your arm like your parents haven't already told us everything. Just be honest and let us help you. Did I mention that the state only recognizes the existence of psychiatric patients Monday through Friday? Meaning, the past 48 hours you've spent here didn't even count. Meaning, we still have time for a breakthrough or a breakdown. This is a good thing. This means we still have time to help you. And I can see that you're getting upset. But do not walk away from me with tears streaming and knuckles buried in palms. That type of body language is aggressive. And we might have to do something about that. A sedative? Maybe diazepam, perhaps? I don't think being alone is best for you right now. Maybe you should spend time with the other patients. Get to know how they got here. Listen to them when they tell you you got lucky getting placed in this psych ward we are one of the good ones and we want you to stay here we figure if we keep you long enough maybe you'll eventually start to fit in or maybe if we keep you locked up you'll eventually start to act out and we will be right here waiting to prescribe you something to label you with the diagnosis we didn't cause your social anxiety we only heightened what was already there we just want to see you reach your full potential as a patient remember this asylum was built to help you. Damn. 
That was absolutely incredible. Thank you. And before we get deeper into your story, David, you wanted to mention that your disabilities are not connected to psychiatric wards? I've been working for 45 years on uh, mental health. 2012, December, I fell, got my cat in the loft and uh, broke my neck. So I can only move my arms and fix my voice. Mm. Also, please use your closed captioning. <laughs> yeah, please use closed captioning if you're having any trouble understanding David. How old were you when you were first admitted? The first time I was admitted, I was 22 years old. 29. 19. Do you feel comfortable walking us through the events that led up to that? I had been struggling with depression for several years. When I started my second bachelor degree, it became really bad and I was having really intense suicidal thoughts. It came to a point where I decided to act on them and I made an attempt on my life. Before I overdosed, I called a crisis line. They didn't really help and so I hung up, but by that point they had kind of intuited that I was going to do it and mm. so they were able to track my location using my cell phone and so an ambulance arrived. <laughs> okay, now you're going to be admitted to the psychiatric ward. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 no, I don't. I don't want that. When they tell you that you don't have a choice in being there, I think there's even more of like a fight or flight response. Like, no, I gotta get out of here. I had finally landed a job that I liked. I suddenly got let go from that job. I had been dealing with some mental health issues as far as like depression and anxiety. I had a breakdown and I went to try and talk to my father about it. I wanted to um, get a reaction out of him and I wanted him to care. So I, made a threat. I had picked up a knife and put it to my arm. I had no actual intentions of hurting myself. I went upstairs to my room, I got a knock on my door, and I opened my door and there were three policemen lying to me, telling me, come outside, we just want to talk to you. It's either go out willingly or go out in handcuffs. You made the choice to go only because you didn't want to be arrested. So, I mean, that's not choice. It's not like you voluntarily went. They had me get into an ambulance and I was taken to one hospital and one of the nurses told me that I was waiting to be transferred. And so that's how I found out that I was being admitted. I got scholarships to Harvard and I really wanted to achieve. So the pressure was off the charts. So I turned to a lot of cannabis and I became overwhelmed. I stopped sleeping. I thought the CIA was after me. I'd watch TV and think the individual was talking just to me. Friends and my roommates were very worried. So they brought me down to the infirmary. I was talking with a psychiatrist and he said, are you willing to go to a psych facility? In my super clever, super heated state, I said, yes, I'd be willing. So they brought the ambulance. Okay, David, get in. I said, ah, I said, I'm willing <laughs> to go, but I won't go. I thought I was funny, you know, but uh, I do not recommend this approach. Do not recommend this approach. No, they quickly just took me against my will. And do you remember what it felt like walking into that psychiatric ward for the first time, seeing inside the walls? You have security walking you up to, and they have to ask for the door to be unlocked. And I was like, good God, did I commit a crime or something? <laughs> there was kind of a small communal area where a lot of people were hanging out. All the rooms were shared rooms. That was kind of weird too, like wanting some privacy from the trauma and whatnot of what just happened, but being with other people who are going through their own traumas. With their moments pushing this psycho drug on me, they said, uh, will you take this? Is that sure? And I poured it on the floor. Within moments, I found out what happens. Technicians show up, bring you to solitary confinement, hold you down on a mattress, and inject you in the butt. I was in solitary for about three days. Were you told how they hoped to help you? I saw my psychiatrist like once a week, which is 
not a lot, you know, right. when you're staying full time in an intensive psychiatric unit and you're hoping to get out, you're hoping to get better and get out. The one time in group, I really started to open up and I, I was actually like actively participating. The therapist interrupted me and told me that we don't have enough time for me to go into detail. That's like the reason that you're there to talk about these things and get better. At least that's what you were told, right? It felt like there was no winning. Were there any standout moments from any of those experiences that show the extent of the way that you were treated? They blindfolded me in the ambulance. That feels like a hostage situation almost. Totally, like I don't understand why that happened. And you know, I've heard from other EMTs that there's no way that that should have ever happened, but it did. When I was in that psychiatric ward, I was put into restraints on both my wrists and both my ankles. And once I was restrained, they injected me with antipsychotics and a sedative. They brought me into an isolation room, but it had a window so the other patients could walk by and see what was going on. And they called in six big men, basically, both nurses and security members, to essentially pin me to the ground. They took off all my clothes and they injected me again. They left me <laughs> and I was just banging on the door screaming like people can walk by and see me naked right now. Like I am so uncomfortable being that stereotypical psychiatric patient even though I feel it was very merited. I feel like that's a warranted response to the situation that just went down. But I was being seen as the psychotic, crazy, Patient. And that's the picture that people have in their head of crazy psychiatric ward patients. And it was me, you know, like me. I am sitting here speaking to you all, hopefully conveying that I am a normal person just like anyone else. And that still happened to me. That's why sharing these stories are important to kind of humanize the people who access these psychiatric care services. All the people I met in the hospital were regular people and they just had a really, really bad day. Nobody was there for them in the way that they needed them to be there for them in that moment. Now looking back on it, do you now feel like you were rightfully admitted for any reason? I understand why I was there. The psych ward is really there just to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. It's not really there to treat the underlying mental health struggles that you're experiencing. It kept me safe in a really critical time. But then when I left, you know, I was still suicidal. And then I was dealing with, you know, the shame of what happened and the despair of feeling like, okay, I ended up in a psychiatric hospital and I still feel crappy. Were you encouraged to express your emotions? If I let these emotions out, they're gonna come to me with a list of medications that they want me to take that they think will make me feel better. Too much emotion, they got concerned. If you show too little of emotion, they got concerned. So I tried to just keep this balance of like, I'm just gonna stay content. Weird dynamic where you can't even get the help that's being offered because of the way it's all set up. I was refusing to take medication that they wanted me to take, and they were like, well, if you don't take this medication, we're going to give you ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. They were kind of like, you know, blackmailing me with that to get me to take medication. And then they were also saying that, well, you can't leave until you're taking this medication. They were often not medicating effects from the psych drugs. I knew intuitively that I was like a cement in my brain. Research has proven us right. There are many studies of use of these drugs can cause frontal lobe shrinkage, literally a chemical lobotomy to be pressured to have a chemical lobotomy. <laughs> Really? <laughs> you had the choice and you said, you know what? That. Yeah, that was hopeless. Before we continue learning about the world of psych ward survivors, how difficult was it for you to leave the ward each time to escape? I'd like to take a quick intermission to thank Daily Harvest for sponsoring this episode, which I'm stoked about. I love Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbreads, smoothies, and more all built on organic fruits and vegetables delivered directly to your door. The meals they offer literally take minutes to prepare and never use preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And it's all vegan and it's all delicious. I love the watermelon dragon fruit. I love the tart cherry raspberry smoothie. Mm. And you know, you know I could 
You know I get down on some strawberry rich rippled berry compo. Holy sh! And I also think it's really cool that they focus on increasing biodiversity, investing in organic farming practices, reducing food waste, and prioritizing recyclable and compostable packaging. Get more time back to do you and take care of yourself. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter code Padilla to get up to $40 off your first box. That's code Padilla for up to $40 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Now, back to the world of Psych Ward Survivors. How difficult was it for you to leave the ward each time to escape? <laughs> they didn't like it when I spoke like that. <laughs> oh, if you use the word escape, they said, and you don't have to escape, we will let you. Well, no, it's more like, oh, you're staying definitely then if you think you need to escape from here. <laughs> the mere idea that you want to escape means that you should stay? I guess so, I don't know. To escape, it was very, very hard because, you know, it's a locked ward and there's always the nursing staff watching the door to leave. So there was no way you were ever going to sneak out. How did you eventually leave each time? Discharged. I either convinced them that I was well again. And you say convinced <laughs> because it what, didn't actually mean that it was true. I don't think there's really any way that they can expect someone who is in, you know, a crisis point in terms of their mental health when they go in to make a full recovery in a few weeks. While I was in the hospital questioning, like, why am I not leaving? My dad was at home calling, trying to get a hold of my uh, caseworker, my psychiatrist, like anybody to figure out like why. And that was one of the, the things that the doctor did tell me is that the only way for me to pretty much be able to leave is if my home environment wasn't good for me or if my parents didn't feel comfortable with me coming back home, I would have to find a new safe place to stay. I explained that to my dad and I was just like, you need to advocate for me to come home or they're gonna keep me here. You could have potentially been there for weeks or months or even years if you didn't have any other place to go afterwards. And that, that's really something that I was afraid of. What kind of support were you given once you were discharged? Really nothing. One of my psychiatric ward stays, they made an appointment with a psychiatrist a month down the road. But other than that, there was no community connections made. And so it was really the, just your discharge with your bag of clothes and stuff and good luck. There are many studies that have confirmed that people who are discharged from the hospital are at the greatest risk of suicide in like the two weeks that follow that discharge. And you're discharged without any supports. It feels very hopeless. And so that is why a lot of people are like, well, I may as well kill myself because I'm never gonna get better. Because these are people that are being admitted possibly for wanting to harm themselves. And then now they go through this traumatic experience, maybe feeling like they lose a sense of their identity, their autonomy, you know, they they feel just this, this complete lack of control in their lives, maybe even more so now than beforehand. And then they're being left on their own afterwards when all those emotions could have just amplified the feelings that they were feeling beforehand. Totally, yeah. Do you feel like your experiences are similar to all psych ward experiences? There are people who have had great experiences in, in psychiatric wards. People in my life or friends that I've met through mental health care advocacy who look at psychiatric wards as a safe place to go. There is a very wide range of experiences of psychiatric wards. And mine is not, you know, indicative of everyone's. Do you think that the, the difference there may lie in the fact that you were involuntarily admitted while some other people who may experience or have a good experience were voluntarily admitted? I think if you are there of your own free will, of your own abolition, and you are a voluntary patient, I think that creates a much more cooperative dynamic where you are there asking these professionals for their help. What types of things do you think could be done to ensure that people have a positive experience? I think there needs to be some sort of like turnaround with the staff. A lot of like the staff and the nurses are like there for a paycheck and they don't, they're not actually there for the well-beings of the patients. Like if you're choosing to do this job, it should come with a certain expectation and a certain amount of patience and a certain amount of care. Having more of a cooperative patient-led experience is really missing. To take ownership over their health and wellness and to work with the resources that are potentially provided in a psychiatric ward to get to a more stable place where they can then work on that in the community too, hopefully with 
resources that the hospital will connect them with. Naya wants to know if being in the psych ward did any good, or if for you it just worsened your mental health. When I uh, fell, I had time before the ambulance. I felt the uh, paralysis creeping up. Even then, I was looking for the silver lining. Five lockups opened my eyes to the oppressed. I have had a lifetime of working closely with thousands of folks mm. who are amazing. If there's anyone watching who feels like they might need help, but are understandably a little nervous about possibly being admitted into a psychiatric ward. Is there anything that you want to say to them? If you are in a period of crisis and you need that immediate support, please do go to the hospital. Like I said, they are going to be able to help keep you safe and hopefully at least provide some bare minimum services such as you know access to a psychiatrist and a therapist do not be afraid while you're in the psychiatric ward to advocate for yourself mm -hmm. advocate for the care that you need ask for help getting care within the community all right you got five seconds a shout out or promote anything you want directly into camera go you want to find out more about my experiences in psychiatric wards or just living with schizoaffective disorder check out our youtube channel living well with schizophrenia i've started a consulting business at to institute so uh, email me be touch and the psych ward says it is filled with poems and stories and journals from my experience you can get it at my website anitadpoetry.com as soon as i checked out anthony's work uh, i subscribed <laughs> so everyone do that uh. Thank you, David. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I spent today with psych ward survivors, and I feel like I understand the state of mental health care in this country at least a little bit more. While every experience at a psychiatric ward will be completely unique based on individual circumstances and the facility itself, it's obvious to me that the way some people are treated could certainly use some adjustment. You know, for instance, more focus on communicating and connecting with individuals to respectfully help them cope with their emotions. And if you are in need for help, I highly encourage you to seek it. I'll include some links down in the description that can hopefully be helpful in pointing you in the right direction. I think it just makes it a little bit more of an approachable topic if you inject a bit of humor into it while mm -hmm. still, you know, giving an accurate depiction of what it's been like. I was going to, I was trying to inject humor into it by making a joke about injecting, but <laughs> <laughs> I tried, I know, I know, I tried, I tried and I couldn't think of anything. <laughs>